If McCain's scapegoating of the SEC chairman, Mr. Cox, feels familiar, recall how President Bush blamed his Katrina response on FEMA's Michael Brown, despite the fact that Bush himself had downgraded FEMA. And more importantly, as a matter of GOP philosophy, Bush believed Katrina was a state-level problem, not one of his. Today, everyone from Democrats to the Wall Street Journal rejected Senator McCain's scapegoating of Chairman Cox. In fact, predictions of the crisis predate Cox's tenure, predictions of the failure of the GOP philosophy, economic philosophy that McCain has pursued throughout his decades in Congress. Since the Reagan era, undoing the rules and protections put in place by Franklin Roosevelt to prevent a recurrence of the Great Depression. The result, a growing disconnect between risk and responsibility. As McCain and allies like economic advisor Phil Graham passed law after law that let rich Wall Streeters make risky financial bets with borrowed money, boosting company assets on paper, taking home huge bonuses with less and less of FDR's oversight, leaving the taxpayers to save these eviscerated companies while the executives who bled them dry were able to walk away with billions. We turn now to John Talbot, once an investment banker at Goldman Sachs and now author of Obamanomics, how bottom-up econ economic prosperity will replace trickle-down economics. Thanks for your time tonight, sir. Oh, thanks for having me, Keith. Republicans had several years to do exactly what they wanted with the economy, unfettered, no holds barred. Is this an inevitable result, or is this just, oh, well, this, this guy, uh, former Congressman Cox, he messed up, but the idea is still good. We should try it again. You know, if you remember, Keith, uh, the Democratic Party's been criticized here for quite a while for not being able to elicit exactly what their economic plan is in three words or less, where the Republicans for 30 years have vowed to have lower taxes, less government, and less regulation. The, the good news is that's a catchy phrase, and, and it's so catchy, I hope the American people remember it when they go to the polls in November. But another more truthful way of saying that is to say that the Republicans were in favor of huge deficits, rampant corruption, and global financial meltdowns. And, and there's nothing random about this event. You know, Greenspan and others are trying to claim this is a hundred year flood, completely unexpected. It's really just the opposite. It's a direct result of complete and utter deregulation of the entire financial market for the last 30 years, starting with realtors, commercial bank leverage, investment bank leverage 25 times, Fannie Mae leverage over 100 to 1, hedge funds completely non-transparent. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, it goes on and on. You mentioned the word corruption. How cynical would it be to ask whether these policies, the deregulation and the like, were not well-intentioned attempts to spread prosperity, but instead were uh, calculated attempts to make the rich richer? Well, the whole idea of deregulation is to allow business owners to do what they want. And all business owners want one thing, which is greater profits, however they can accomplish it. And unfortunately, uh, for American workers, workers' wages are the biggest line and cost expense to most businesses. So what do you do? You get in and you put the American worker in competition with low-wage China and Vietnam. You, you cut their benefits, you attack their unions, uh, and, and, and then you do whatever else you can uh, to improve your profits, whether it's you know, degrade your quality control, uh, hurt your environmental efforts, et cetera, et cetera. But Mr. Talbot, uh, Bush and McCain kept telling us that everything was great because that American worker is productive and productivity rose 20 percent during the Bush administration. But despite that, real earnings of workers actually fell. If, if worker productivity is, is the big fundamental, to use somebody's phrase, of our economy, why doesn't it actually ever benefit the workers who are so efficient? Yeah, I mean, this is uh, the fallacy of most economists. They believe as productivity increases, workers' pay will increase. But workers' pay is a negotiation, if anybody knows who's ever gone into their boss's office at the end of the year. And we've seen unions in this country decline in the private sector from 35% to approximately 9%. And as I said, this worker force in America, one of the most productive in the world, has been put in competition through globalization with 50 cent an hour employees around the world. So that's a very tough environment to negotiate a higher wage. All right. As I mentioned, your, your, the title of your book is Obamanomics. Uh, can you define that and how it will explain uh, and, and change things in 45 seconds? <laughs> yeah, in 45 seconds, the subtitle is How Bottom-Up Economic Prosperity Will Replace Trickle-Down Economics. I think your audience remembers the pitch for trickle-down economics back in 2000. I think the American people were taken 
But we ended up voting for George Bush. He ended up giving three or four trillion dollars to the wealthiest 10 percent of Americans. It's just amazing to me that McCain is trying the same pitch again because we fell for it. But we, the, the, the money never trickled down. It didn't result in a tremendous improvement in the economy or in, in new jobs. So Barack's whole emphasis on, is on bottom up. Not wealth redistribution, mm -hmm. but giving everybody an equal opportunity through greater education and greater job opportunity. John Talbot, the author of Obamanomics, uh, thank you for your insight at this uh, extraordinary time, sir. Thanks, Keith.